Nah, I'll fuck with Keith Lee. He been doing like reviews on Atlanta fucking restaurants and shit. The Keith Lee effect. Let's see what he's talking about. Imagine you own a restaurant and the difference between having a line of hungry customers out the door every day or your establishment looking like a ghost. This is right, Chris. Nigga, is this an anime fight? Fortnite? She was cooking for real? I don't know, bro. I got, uh, what's it called? Uh, she's shit straight out of One Piece. I got, uh, big underscore underscore ed 445 says sit on my face, please. What the fuck is this? Yo, get this shit on my fucking face, my nigga. See on my face, please. This town hey, is based on the experience of one man. That one man is not a professional food critic nor a culinary expert. Make it of people soon. around the country treat his word like God. Why was you bent over like that? Keith Lee, Nigga, I'm set, yo. Keith Lee is either Batman or Joker when it comes to restaurant owners. But once you hear his story, you will understand why he has such a cult-like following. It's much deeper than a guy who has decent taste buds. Keith Lee is a man who failed at the one thing he was actually good at. Then at his darkest moment he refused oh, to give up and created a meteoric influence in an industry he had no business being in. Keith described himself as a very small child who felt the need to display his dominance to overcompensate for his short stature. His bad behavior led to him getting expelled from every school in the Detroit, Michigan area before oh, attending a charter school as a last resort. Where Let's play Fortnite? Y'all wanna play Fortnite today? Click Keith Lee, my homie. He barely managed to graduate the eighth grade. So by the time I got to high yeah, school, was. I was a wee head, Brother, mm -hmm. smoking every day. I'm talking about bad, bad, mm -hmm. like every day. Um, my freshman year, I had a point six oh. GPA. Things would get even. What the fuck? How is that possible? Worse for Keith in high school, where he lived in the shadow of his brother. Keith's older brother Kevin had already garnered a remarkable reputation as a star athlete who graduated with a 3.9 GPA before well, receiving a scholarship Devin, to I wrestle know, for Grand play. Valley State University, which is an NCAA Division II school. Keith decided to follow in his brother's footsteps. Do y'all watch that wrestling? Like this shit? Do y'all watch this? This type of wrestling? Do y'all watch these or not? Nah? No? which is an NCAA Division II school. Keith bro, I ain't gonna lie, I seen a South Park episode about this shit. I swear to God, that shit had me dying. Bro, I see, yo, I seen a fucking South Park episode about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that shit, yo, oh my god, that shit, I mean, Following his brother's footsteps for That's all gay. the wrong reasons. When I got there, it was more out of spite. It was more out of uh, arrogance. It was more out of just like, now I'm approved you to you, I can do it. South Park I don't even want to do it. No, I'm going right. to just do it because you told me I can't do something else. So I'm going to just do it just to shit on you, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He utilized all his pent-up aggression and transferred it nope. out on the wrestling mat, where he showed a genuine talent for the sport and squashed his competition. But he was a stubborn, disobedient child who did didn't focus on his grades, my, didn't stay Amazon disciplined, and quit the, the team. Then his father got arrested and imprisoned following a heated altercation with some people in his neighborhood. His oh, father's shit. inability to provide for his family meant Keith, his mother, and younger brother were forced to move into an abandoned home where Keith started to question his religious faith and overall perspective on life. At his lowest moment, the only way he could go was up. He stopped smoking, stopped hanging out with bad influences, and got back into wrestling. Okay. Fast forward to his senior year, Keith averaged a 3.6 GPA and was preparing to- Scum TK be watching movies and anime on stream? No one gives a fuck? to wrestle at the Michigan High School State Championships, which hadn't been achieved by a student at Southfield High School since the 90s. He received a partial scholarship to wrestle for Indiana Tech, but made a critical error. He never actually enrolled in the school. He showed up at Indiana Tech, connected with the wrestling coach, attended random classes, and got fully immersed into the college life. He was expecting a dorm room since he thought he had a scholarship, but when he showed up to the admissions office, they were confused. They take me to the office and they're like, you don't have no paperwork filled out, sir. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, they was like, they was like, the only thing we have is the offer letter that we sent you. What? 
So we only got your name and your information from the offer letter. <laughs> they was like, that's all we know about you. We don't know nothing else. <laughs> he treated it like a birthday party. Devin, were you reborn at the age of 10? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? The invitation. You sent me the invitation. I just showed up. Keith laughs about the situation now, but at the time, he was devastated. They told Keith if he didn't pay them $20,000 for the semester and two... $20,000 for the application fee, he wouldn't what? be allowed to go to school. What the fuck? We could low-key make an ice cream shaman's but you be playing too much. Bent nigga EDP. What the fuck are you talking about? This nigga, bent nigga EDP and ISO Mental has been fucking talking. What's up, little ass nigga? Alright. Unable to get a loan, yeah, Keith had to move back with his family who relocated to Las Vegas. He was now sharing bunk beds with his 14-year-old brother who Lost regularly seven of reminded this after I that bet. he was a loser. At this point, I'm in the deepest depression I've been in in a long time. Because I'm like, oh, reality is sitting in. Yeah, He's right. Yeah. I'm not in school. I don't have a job. I got fired already. Mm. I didn't quit a job. My mm. track history with work is already terrible. I didn't got kicked out of school. Yeah. Damn. I don't have no other offers. Right. Nothing is, so nothing in is life for is Twitch? looking right to me right now right. i don't have nothing going for me keith's older brother kevin had recently secured a contract to fight in the ufc as kevin the motown phenom lee and kevin was a savage at his peak he held a 16 and 2 professional record and was toe-to-toe -to -toe with legends like tony ferguson and charles Oliveira. kevin forced keith to get into the gym with him and on mm. his first day their coach dewey cooper realized the potential keith had as an mma fighter desperate for money and a purpose keith trained for a year straight and won his first four amateur fights his older brother like lcg low key i see you too oh my Yo, I was not gonna say it, but guy. Dude. The only two losses he had were by. You can watch pure porn on stream if you deleted a bot. No joke, that's cap. Cause, uh, bro, that's fucking cap and shit. Cause I got banned from a nigga saying a hard R off a YouTube video, my nigga. That's cap as fuck. That's literally cap. That's literally cap. I split decision, meaning he was a very promising. I watched hentai on stream. Prospect. However, he was earning next to nothing for these. 500 maybe $1,000 per fight. Keep in mind, this was over the course of three years. So he was broke following a rotation of various low-end jobs. But luckily, he met his girlfriend, now wife, Ronnie, while working for ASICS. Keith credits Ronnie with being the anchor to keeping him grounded and focused on becoming the best. That's it. This time I'm out if they do some real shit, gang. This time I'm out version of himself. Following a submission victory against Leonardo Carvalho at Global Legion FC 13, Keith proposed to his girlfriend Ronnie and intentionally oh, got her pregnant two days later. On the same day of the proposal, Keith's manager informed him that his victory against Carvalho earned him a six-figure contract with Bellator. He won well, okay. his very first Bellator bout against Sean Bunch. It took many- Yo, this nigga's short as fuck. Okay. I just had to say it. Your contract with Bellator. He won his very first Bellator bout- Bro, This nigga's literally short as fuck. against Sean Bunch. It took You're many five, years, six. but once I am, he finally- I am literally six foot. Stop the short allegations. You niggas see me on LJ stream and y'all still call me short. I am not watching that clip. They had a support system. Mm. Oh my. Roxanne from the- This nigga's an NPC. Did he jiggle? Never. <laughs> What's good niggas? around him, wife, coaches, brother, he was able to crawl out of the repetitive cycle of depression and low ambition. Now with some free time and spare income, Keith signed up for TikTok. Keith's journey on TikTok started just like anyone else, participating in trends for no reason other than it seemed fun. From there, his uploads were just random things that pertain to his everyday life. He was getting maybe 50 views per video, but it seemed more like an outlet for him to have fun rather than start a business. But then the pandemic hit, the world shut down, and Keith needed to make something Bro, happen. See, I feel no. like I should have started streaming in 2020 when it been Was I streaming in 2020? I wasn't streaming around. Nah, I wasn't. Damn. I should have streamed. I should have streamed around this time. I wasn't streaming though. I was doing YouTube videos. Love TikTok. I thought I kept saying I wouldn't. Now I'm sick and tired of every video I post. Only getting 50 views. I'm gonna sit here with my dog and tip me and get famous. In an attempt to garner more views, Keith began posting psychology facts videos. He gained a little bit of traction. Yeah, I start, Yeah, I, I was streaming like late 2021. But it didn't last long. He started to become desperate for virality. 
famous? Nigga said one more time, y'all getting 600. <laughs> Yo, that nigga Dustin ain't playing. Follow these simple instructions. Touch that. Download another mother app, because this ain't the one. Ah. Uh. This ain't it, Chief. It ain't never gonna happen. <laughs> never. He would cash out people if they solved a riddle. He posted math problems for people to solve. Even though uh. he looked defeated, he refused to give up. At this point, Keith was obsessed with the platform, posting daily, if not multiple times per day. He started featuring his wife Ronnie on his page after he went semi-viral talking about building a nursery. Devin, is that Turk clip real? AI generated. ...for their expected baby. He then proceeded to document milestones throughout their pregnancy, many of which received thousands of views and ignited a dramatic shift in Keith's content. Okay. In September of 2020, Keith won his second fight against Vinicia Zani. Whatever they have in store for me, I'm always here to fight. I'll Chat, y'all think I could become a boxer? ...fight as soon as my daughter is born. On some DDD shit? On some uh, so, DDD shit? DDD? How the fuck you say his name? DDG? As soon as she gets here, I'm ready to You're go. not Ippo. He didn't uh, lie. Just one week later, he and Ronnie welcomed their first child, Carter. From there, Keith's whole TikTok was dedicated to documenting said, him gross. being a parent. His loving and nurturing oh, attitude towards his child. Yo, everybody was on Among Us. TikTok was dedicated to doc- Bro, they gotta have another Among Bro, I missed the Among Us era, bro. I missed that shit, bro. I gotta, bro. They gotta have another Among Us era, bro. I missed that shit, bro. Documenting him being a parent. His loving and nurturing attitude towards his child attracted a large following of supporters. He provided Aww. them with wholesome moments, such as clipping his daughter's nails for the first time. Like, bro, they had uh, Among Us, Fall Guys, Fortnite. I missed all three of them shits. We need a new, bro, we need a new game era. Like, we need something to take over again, bro. We need that shit, bro. Like, it's no, like, it's no game errors no more, bro. Gaming fell off, bro. I'm telling y'all. Gaming is fucking, bro, I swear to God. Gaming is fucking, like, it fell off, bro. Prime Roblox was like that. When was Roblox had a prime? I say prime Roblox probably like 2017, 2018. Prime Roblox was like 2018, 2017. One of them. Nigga, Devin ever was YouTube days. That's you was a dare. You show mental issues. 77 says add me on Among Us. My name is legit nine. You can add niggas on Among Us. I'm and celebrating her first Halloween. 2016, this was 2020 his was prime Roblox. Era. I'm saying after 2020, niggas got money hungry. It was just straight. Fucking mobile games on Roblox. Keith took a fight on short notice, just two months after his previous, to so fight ass. on the main card at Bellator 253. Unfortunately, he lost by decision to Rafian Stotts, but that didn't ruin his spirits. Keith the Family Man kept posting <laughs> his terrible dancing videos and even started sprinkling in some cooking content. By mid-2021, he had accumulated 1 million followers and was averaging maybe 100,000 views per post. W's. This was his foundation. The people that knew Keith was a humble, honest family They only man. show games that made him Money, yeah, he exactly. would hit a new rock bottom when he lost his six-figure Bellator contract. In August of 2021, he was set to face his toughest opponent yet, who was undefeated. I Keith was beaten and bloody and then submitted in just the first round, then got up while unconscious and stumbled headfirst into the cage. Oh, the clips shit. of his loss made the rounds on social media. He was embarrassed. He got a call from his manager saying he was cut from Bellator. Keith was back to rock bottom. His oh. first TikTok back after his loss was him, poetically, ordering some food. I had these sunglasses on because my eyes black and my face is beat up. I'm fine though for anybody. Well, I'm not fine, but. Damn. Yo, these I'll fucking ads. He had 1 million followers, but he was only making around $400 per month on TikTok. His fight career was looking grim, and TikTok didn't seem realistic. Then he got a call from the owner of Harold's Chicken just a couple days after his loss. They asked him to do a review of their establishment. At the time, he didn't know it, but Keith just discovered that shit his was next crazy, adventure. All right, what Harold's the Chicken in Las Vegas. They didn't have no mac and cheese, but it's okay. That what happened to you, so what the fuck are you talking about, Red? What the fuck do you be talking about, my nigga? Huh? Do you have a thought behind that fucking brain? Or you just be typing shit? Okay. Overall, I get a The bit that started it all? 9 out of 10. Oh, shit. question. Following his review of Harold's Chicken, Keith made food reviews as a side quest on his page. However, his main focus was on family vlogs and cooking content. He was still largely referred to as the cooking guy, regularly being asked about his cooking content during interviews. In January of 2022, his wife became pregnant with their second child, and they desperately needed to find another source of income. He started doing more and more food reviews, but they weren't that organized, and he was very generous with his ratings. We are sitting outside of firehouses because today we are doing an official Food review. This has a perfect. Uh, you started watching them in 2022. Like a little bit. I got that feeling on my lips. You still taste. When I see, I think he's leaving my first time. He was on my for you page. 
like around 2022. Yeah, around that time too. It was around that time. All of the flavor, 10 out of 10. Keith says he leaned on his faith and prayed something good would come from this TikTok thing. And it did. In June of 2022, he signed a brand deal with Wingstop worth six figures, the same amount he had lost from the Bellator contract. What? He successfully was making a career on TikTok, but it was about to- So you telling me if I start posting food reviews, I will be the next Keith Fleet and get six figures of a uh, uh, Wingstop deal. No? to get a whole lot better. His food reviews slowly started to become his main content because his brutal honesty was very entertaining. All together, this food was $50 and the customer service was terrible. The lady at the front where I was picking up was really rude, like extremely rude. I had to call back and get her name. I think she lied because she answered the phone like I didn't recognize her voice and said, No, you're not that funny or interesting. That's what you think, my nigga. That's what you think, bitch. Bitch ass nigga, eat my dick, boy. Hold on, let me go get the girl. You the girl. Then in October, the popular YouTube channel People vs. Food approached him to collaborate on their channel, and he accepted- I'm realistic. There is no boundaries of anything you do, chat. All right? You could do anything in life, my nigga. You, you want to do something, you could do it, bro. I'm telling you right now, there's no boundaries, my nigga. You could do anything, bro. There's no realistic boundaries. What are you talking about? I'm realistic. You fucking putting that shit on yourself. Life is not realistic. You could die tomorrow. This channel has over 12 million YouTube subscribers, and he knew you know, the exposure would help his TikTok career immensely. I By the RP. way, double check if you're subscribed to my channel. I asked my wife what I should post on my page to make people not only come and watch, but actually follow. We ain't playing and we decided score, to RP post one full yeah. review every day. The first got like 11 million views. From there, Keith's entire content shifted to strictly food we reviews. He has only been doing it full time for one year at this point, but he never could have predicted what was about to happen next. While most high profile food critics only pay attention to high-end restaurants Damn. that are too expensive for most who the bro i swear to god how do, why is people paying most high so much money for this little ass shit file food critics only pay attention to high-end who's paying this much money for this shit restaurants that are too expensive for most keith shifted that focus onto affordable small family-owned restaurants that were easily accessible to the public or fast food slash popular affordable food chains he That's... even went out of his way to give a chance to establishments that were struggling financially however Not keith yet. doesn't consider himself a food critic his reviews feel and look like one of your friends giving you a casual breakdown a typical review would be him ordering three or four different items on the menu like a family of four would then tasting every single item and rating it from one to ten he often mm. throws in other notes like their customer service or additional information that is relevant to the experience. I got it. Let's try it and rate it one through ten. I spent twenty three. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This nigga making six bands by eating food, recording and himself. Oh, bro, that's what they look like. Hey, Custom service, delightful. Is that it's a fair? Very interaction, but the hey. guy who worked at the front was really nice, and the actual building itself very aesthetically pleasing. As I'm saying, it's no boundaries of what you can do, my nigga. Like I swear, people think it's boundaries. It's no boundaries. You can do anything. Red Bear Wolf says Devin, you would love this job. Do it. Okay, you bitch ass nigga. Devin could do this. Exactly. You could do whatever you want. Y'all not getting that. I'm, I'm telling y'all, y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. It made me want to eat. Wait a minute, bro. Even raw, wait. It was lacking so, spice. So to add it to salsa, what? took the tacos itself from a 9 to a 9.7. That's one of them one. Even when he gives a negative review to the say, food, he will provide wave. more context oh, so it doesn't wave. come off as unfair. Nigga, why he often goes out of his wave. way to leave massive tips, sometimes hundreds of dollars to workers that give him good service. Since he had already built a chips? strong foundation during his family. How much y'all be tipping DoorDash? Uh, if y'all get DoorDash, how much y'all tipping him? Be honest. Man era, there wasn't necessarily one viral review that changed his life. Two dollars? His growth has been Me steady. I, and along I've been doing like two dollars, three dollars, three dollars, two dollars on tips. If I'm doing, doing, feeling generous and it's like a late ass time, probably like five. The journey his audience I haven't got to his down to earth attitude, unwavering love for they his wife and that kids, tip. and what dedication to God. But even Yo. if you don't know about his past, after watching a few videos, you can just feel he is a kind and genuine man. They didn't care about Keith not being technically qualified nor having a depth of culinary knowledge. Mm. He thinks what sets him apart is his values. I stand on my integrity. I stand on my values, and I don't allow those to be wavered or to be shook, no matter the amount of money, the ass, opportunity, or of? the people I'm surrounded by. With nearly 10 i can't order off uber east no more bro them niggas that, that shit fuck it so uber east is ass fuck yeah uber east is fucking garbage bro uber east is like ass them niggas like i hate that fucking app 
I'm never ordering off Uber Eats again, bro. Million loyal followers. So he's standing on business time. Full-time dedication to quality reviews of local or, or, or less or, or, popular or, or, restaurants. Or, 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 a phenomenon dubbed that? the Keith Lee effect would take over Las food, Vegas food, then all over the USA. One of the first beneficiaries of the Keith Lee effect was a local food truck called 303 in the Cut. In November 2022, Keith's review blew up. In 35 million. And garnered over 35 million TikTok views since its initial up. Grubhub. What the fuck? People actually career addict. Five jobs, five jobs where you get paid to sleep. What? What? Bad bed and mattress tester, eighty dollars per hour. What the fuck? Sleep research subject and clinical clinical trials for hundred hundred to three thousand. Well, you get paid to sleep, bro. I never knew about these jobs, bro. Sleep ex executive. 140 per day? Yo! Yo, it's... Yo! I never knew these shits, bro. Damn do you be cleaning your booty. Yo, what is wrong with... Why is this nigga so fucking sexual? And they do things to, to you? And they do things to you, too, though? Huh? And they do things to you, though? What you mean they do things to you? What do you mean? If you slept for 24 hours, they'll, that's like a, a 19k dog, 1940k dogs. They like fuck you or something when you sleep? What? Upload. Keith confirmed their- They take your shit when you sleep. Oh, fucking hell. Cheesecake sandwich was a 10 out of 10. And the next night, 303 had people waiting in line for over an hour, wrapped around the corner for their food. The owner what? said they doubled their income in one day, and it stayed that way for over a year. Oh one Las God. Vegas pizzeria he reviewed, Frankenson's, made headlines for attracting lines around the block because Keith gave their wings a 10, pizza a 9.8, and garlic wow. knots a 9.2. However, it wasn't just the food. It was Keith's interaction with the owner, Frank, that made people want to support him even more. If I don't like the food, I gotta tell you, I'm not trying to be malicious. And he was like, I'm gonna be real with you too. I need help. Yeah, 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 that hit me here. He said, the food is delicious. He has great reviews on Yelp. The only bad reviews is that he don't close the time it says that he closed on Google. The time it says he closed on Google is 1 a.m. He was like, I literally can't afford to open that late because we don't get that much business. Frank, if you're watching this, I'm gonna be completely honest. You are an amazing man Hi, from shit. what I saw. I appreciated your time and I appreciated your conversation. W mans. He's fucking Let's try this According to Frank, Frankinson's had to hire 23 new team members in the six weeks following Keith's review and had guests from all over the world patiently waiting this for- This is why this nigga getting paid six figures if you think about it. Like, this nigga got so much fucking, like, control over food shits, over TikToks. It's actually crazy as hell. Three hours for his pizza. Like, this nigga Frank got so much thankful control that Keith over helped food. his business and the overall community at large in Las Vegas. Yasser Zermino, owner of Aroma Latin American Cochina, asked Keith to come review their restaurant through email. Keith gave all they five different booty. items over a nine, including the Oaxaca sandwich, which he said was the best he had. He has more control than you. He about to start a pizza place and become a millionaire, bro. If he start a fucking food place, he's gonna be fucked. Cause all the equipment, bro, he gonna be fucked. Cause if he start a food place and that shit nasty, he's done. He's done. He had to make the fucking best food of all time, my nigga. Cause if he make a food place and that shit is ass, it's over with had ever had in his life. The owner said, we went from not being able to pay the bills to now having to hire people to come and help us. Other Vegas-based businesses that <laughs> yeah. Keith reviewed have seen instant growth, like Caribbean restaurant, The Pink Potato, or Southern Taste Seafood, to be a food truck that went from making $200 or under a day to seeing a 900% increase in revenue in the days following Keith's review. But his impact wasn't just on small business. Hey man, W. Keith Lee, bro. Who is this Keith Lee? Oh yeah, this is the fucking drama shit. You don't know. Higgins continued. Keith reviewed another. Most people were understanding of Keith's frustration with these ATL businesses. Others, like ex-football player Chad Ochocinco, thought he was trying to tear down black-owned businesses. Like I don't like the critiquing of our restaurants and and having people and and and, and talking bad about our goddamn businesses. And okay, so if the food nasty, you want niggas to lie? Like, let's be honest. If bro, okay, Chad. Let's be honest, my nigga. If even if it was a fucking black owned business, if the food nasty, my nigga, I would say it was nasty. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't get that. 
Chat, Oko, King Cinco, gotta be quiet. Who the fuck is that? Okay. Like, dude, you know okay. how hard, you know how yeah. hard it is. Why are you skipping? Bro, this video is long as shit. in the food industry. What are the qualifications of being a food critic? Go to a restaurant and do you like the food? Did you like the customer service? What was it like? Yes. What was the wait time like? That's all you gotta do. At the end of the day, Keith just gives his honest Except opinion and experience, but he implores everyone to try for themselves. If he is too positive, his opinion will hold no weight. If he is too negative, he will be seen as destructive. There will always be haters. Yeah. However, broadcasting his opinion to 14 million followers will, without a doubt, prevent a lot of people from trying a restaurant. If Amen. someone I trust says, don't go somewhere to eat, I'll probably listen to them. Or if I have one bad experience, I probably won't go there again. This is why some people argue that you can't have a bad day in the customer service industry. Y'all got any local uh, restaurants y'all be going to with shit? If Devin says Domino is good, I'll eat it. Domino is literally the best pizza. I'm so I'm so serious. Domino's is the best pizza to me. I'm like I'm nigga. I don't know no other good pizza that I'll eat better than Domino's. Yes, yes it is. No, it's not. Yes, the fuck it is. The second contender is literally Papa John's. That's what I'm saying, my nigga. Are you high?